Welcome to the celebration of the International Day of Education. My name is Prudence Nguenya. I'm the acting head of the Education Division of the African Union Commission, but also the substantive head of the Youth Division of the African Union Commission. I'm joined by a high-level panel um, who are here to celebrate the International Day of Education with us at the African Union Commission. Sitting on my right is a woman who needs no introduction, Her Excellency the Commissioner, Her Excellency the Commissioner of Human Resource, Science and Technology, uh, who is going to uh, speak a little bit. And um, next to Commissioner is the representative of the UNICEF Liaison Office to the AU. And sitting next to uh, the representative is the Assistant Professor of the International IPSS Institute of Peace and Security Studies, Institute of Peace and Security Studies uh, from the Addis Ababa University, Dr. Tigis Yeshuas. And um, the, also on my left is um, um, Annalisa, uh, the director of the UNESCO Liaison Office of the African Union Commission. Also joining us is Dr. Yumiko from the IGBA office. Your Excellency, um, I would like to start with you uh, to basically just give us an opening remark about around the theme and um, where we are as the African Union Commission and how does this speak to the priorities of the African Union Commission. Thank you very much, Ms. Prudence. And Happy New Year to our viewers. It's a brand new decade, 2020, and we're excited. We're excited because 2020, as a decade to 2030, we expect to deliver quality education to the youth of Africa. And today we are celebrating the International Day of Education. And this was instituted since 2018. So it is a joy for us as a department, a department that speaks education for the continent. It is a joy for us that we are here with our very significant stakeholders, UNICEF, UNESCO IGBA, and UNESCO, where we pursue the question of quality education for the Africa we want. When we look at Agenda 2063, it speaks of a vision, and that vision is encapsulated in the 50-year roadmap that we have for the Africa we want by 2063. And that vision is divided into five phases, five phases of 10 years each. And for the Department of Human Resources, Science and Technology, we have an education division. Then we have youth, because those who go to school are children and youth. Then we also have science, technology, innovation. Our three divisions speak on education. Our three divisions are educationally conscious. And it is very, very valuable because, as Nelson Mandela said, education is the greatest uh, weapon that can transform the world. So it, it becomes a very big responsibility that if we deserve or if we desire the vision of Agenda 2063, that vision of an integrated, prosperous, and peaceful Africa, driven by its own competent and skilled <coughs> citizens, able to play in the global arena, then we need to consolidate on education. We came up with what we call connecting the dots in education. And D-O-T-S-S, -S, where D stands for digital connectivity. Definitely, Digital connectivity speaks to the future of work, and it is the only way that we can transform the world. Where O speaks to online platforms and learning, we need to look at alternative model of learning so that others who are out of school can even use what we call now the Android H, their telephones, etc., to go to school and then get certification for it. T, teachers as facilitators. And here we have UNESCO IGBA. And this teacher's training is part of the classes of season 2016 2025. Then we have S, safety in school and online. Safety in school and online. We've been hearing stories of how kids go to school, they fight one another, they use knives and slash one another in school, etc. We need to make sure that our schools are safe. Where teachers teach now with guns in their pockets, that is not the future of education. Education itself, like you rightly said, um, uh, like rightly said, should be contextualized in our way of living, in the way we speak, in the way we see. 
So I uh, so the S is safety in school and online. And S, skills for which are foundational and job oriented. So while you were speaking, you all spoke about connecting these dots. So this team for 2020, as Prudence rightly stated, is learning for people, planet, prosperity, and peace. You see, we are having four Ps. The P of planet, the P of people, the P of prosperity, and the people of peace, and the P of peace. And you see, it is as if they are coining it from Agenda 2063 vision. Because our vision is the vision of an integrated, prosperous, and peaceful Africa, driven by its own competent and skilled citizen. So this team provides an opportunity for us to remember that education is a valuable resource for humanity. And it also reaffirms the role of education as a fundamental right a public good and an enabler of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development as well as for Agenda 2063. They normally say, I want to use the opportunity to speak on behalf of teachers. It's the International Day for Education. They say that a teacher's reward is in heaven. And we are saying, no, no, no. The teacher's reward should begin from here. Give them good pay packages and you will see them teach perfectly. And then the result will be good students who are able to apply what they have studied physically, not practically, not theoretically. So this education, learning for people, how do you learn for people? Learning for planet, how do we learn for the planet? Learning for prosperity, how do we learn for prosperity? And learning for peace, how do we learn for peace? All this speaks about the way of living, and the way we can empower ourselves. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Um, I would like to turn to you, Annalisa. I know that UNESCO uh, leads on, um, within the UN system, leads on the education uh, pillar. I would like you to tell us a little bit about how this theme came about and, and what does it mean for us in Africa? Thank you very much, Prudence. It's really uh, a pleasure, an honor to be here uh, today, this uh, <clears throat> International Day of Education. The resolution uh, of uh, United Nations mm -hmm. was adopted last year. You have this initiative to organize the first uh, ever uh, day, mm -hmm. celebration day on uh, International Day of Education. So I really would like to congratulate you to congratulate African Union because uh, really African Union is taking seriously this issue of education. Mm. <clears throat> of course, UNESCO is uh, interested, as you know, uh, with, uh, with education. And one of the most uh, important uh, 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 UNESCO activities uh, is uh, uh, to develop uh, standard setting instruments. Because UNESCO considers education as uh, a human right. Mm. So the right to education. Education is not just a mean for something. Mm -hmm. Education is a right that should be uh, accessible to all uh, human beings. Mm -hmm. For children, for women, for adults, mm -hmm. uh, for uh, uh, all the uh, uh, religions, uh, all the, the, the sex, uh, gender. So, and this is why the Convention Against Discrimination was developed in uh, uh, 1960. So, this, uh, it is through this Convention uh, for which uh, around 20, only, I can say only, 24. African member states ratific, ratify right. mm -hmm. this convention. So this is really very important mm -hmm. in order to ensure that CESA will uh, really uh, achieve all the objectives that is uh, stated in this uh, CESA. Mm -hmm. It is important also to work with all member states mm -hmm. for the ratification of this convention. Mm -hmm. What is the critical role of teachers um, in all of this? Thank you very much. Um, in fact, uh, ICBA International Institute for Capacity Building in Africa was established 20 years ago. 
um, for strengths in teacher development in Africa. At that time, we did not have adults. So obviously, our roles and our objectives are evolving. Yeah. But I like evolution. We don't want to be static. We have to be dynamic. So this is a great call for all of us. Reality of teachers. I think we all know, 1960s and 70s, um, teachers were well respected, well uh, recognized, and well trained, and well motivated. Yeah. Unfortunately, teachers' socioeconomic uh, status has eroded, and it is really because of our own success. A lot of people were educated. In 1960s, mm -hmm. 70s, and then 80s, when I started teaching, we were teachers were the best educated people in the community. Nowadays, probably a lot of parents are better educated than teachers. So we are having um, big issues about the teachers' social economic status. However, even if parents are not, parents are more educated than teachers, parents should be respecting and appreciating teachers. So that is our idea, and uh, I would like to appreciate and congratulate the Commissioner and the HRST for Continental Education Strategy for Africa and its many clusters. Teacher cluster was one of the first ones to be created, and then we work with other clusters like uh, uh, peace education, curriculum, and uh, uh, gender, education. exactly. So others, so we are very proud. And teachers are most important element in quality and the relevance of education. Mm. Relevance of education is, again, evolving. We didn't have to teach children how to use um, online uh, 20, 30 years ago. But now we have to teach them uh, digital literacy is one of the most important things to protect them from a uh, um, possible danger. Tickest, can you speak to us briefly about the role of peace? peace education in this whole education agenda, particularly as it responds to the theme of the year for the AU, as well as the um, entire Agenda 2063. Thank you very much. Uh, well, it's uh, very difficult to speak up the excellent panels. You have summarized so many interesting points. Well, uh, in line with Agenda 2063, Integrated and uh, Prosperous Peaceful Africa, and then this year's team silencing the guns. Her Excellency very well pointed out, uh, we have to emphasize on the quality of free education beyond reotic. And I want to link this point with um, uh, Martin Luther King saying, he said, the function of education is uh, to teach one or to teach the youth to think uh, intensively and to think critically, intelligence plus character. That is a goal of true education. So we have to really focus on critical thinking. I think that's very important because it's very much linked with the issue of quality of education and also intelligence plus character. And this links to my second point, which is peace education. Peace education is working on the attitude, the mind and the behavior and the character of a society. Uh, formally, we can do it from kindergarten up to university level by integrating into our curriculums. Uh, as a separate course like maths or chemistry, or so integrating it in our, for instance, English country context, so civics and ethical education or through moral education. So this is one way of doing or educating the youth. And it's very much linked with silencing the guns and, uh, and also the agenda 2063. Um, so it's very important, I think, uh, to really work on the mind and attitude and the behavior of uh, our youth. And I think uh, the third point is, uh, Her Excellency pointed out, uh, working on peace building, uh, working on um, durable solutions beyond, you know, uh, reotic. We have to really actually walk the talk and uh, sustainable peace building uh, process is working from bottom up, not top down approach, working at the grassroots. Uh, Dr. <coughs> I want to come back to you. Uh, Dr. Tigis speaks about doing all of this in a complex system, and I know this is something that you're passionate about. Um, I would like you to speak a little bit about taking all of this forward. Um, Her Excellency, the Commissioner, has given us uh, the, the new blueprint, uh, its dots. We're connecting the dots. How do we take it forward? How do we uh, move forward with the agenda, given uh, the complex uh, society or complex system that we operate uh, in? So, so for us, we, we had a, 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 a meeting 
um, last week and we discussed a number of things. And the, the message that is coming out of the meeting, which I'd like to offer as some of the solutions for moving forward, is that we've made a lot of promises. Mm. It is time to keep the promise. Mm -hmm. And in trying to keep the promise, there are about four eyes that came out of the meeting. The first eye is investment. We need to try whatever we can to translate our promises into investments. We need to spend more in Africa, we need to spend better, and we need to spend wiser. And we would like to congratulate the African Union's agenda on fighting corruption. To deal with it, every public fund that goes into private pockets deprives a child who should go to school. So it's about spending well, it's about spending more on our continent because there are huge financing gaps. So that's the first part. We need stronger continental institutions. The message that came from the meeting was that the only way Africa can sustain progress is by leaving strong and robust institutions in countries. The third message that came out is innovation. It is not possible for us to bridge the gap with business as usual. I'm extremely excited with the portfolio that sits under you. Youth, education, science, technology, and innovation. We need to look at innovation. We need to think outside the box. We need to think differently. And we need to find ways of moving good practices to scale. Mm -hmm. We should not be scared of testing new things. But when we have tested new things, we have to amplify them. And, and we think that DOTS provides us an opportunity to amplify something that is transformative as a package. And the last I is implementation. The sense that we all had was that policies exist, mm -hmm. ideas exist, the real issue is implementation. And in thinking through implementation, there are a couple of obvious constraints. The first is the real burden of implementers, of not having enough implementers, particularly on the ground. A focus on accelerating primary education teachers and secondary education teachers. We need to do that. We need to shift resources there. But more importantly, we need to consolidate accountability. Uh, Commissioner, Your Excellency, you've given us your vision, the vision of the African mm -hmm. Union on taking this forward. Mm -hmm. um, I would like us in your, I would like you in your closing remarks to keep, to speak a little bit about how are you going to keep this momentum. I think uh, we can, we're hearing a lot around the room and there's a lot of commitments and, 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 and I know that you said this and you say this all the time, how do we ensure that the nice things that people are saying in this room will be able to follow up and be able to implement it. But also the important thing that is coming up, action is at the country level. Mm -hmm. How do we move this mm -hmm. to the country level mm -hmm. and how do we begin to see action at the country level? And not forgetting His Excellency the Chairperson's one, one million, million by 2021. Mm. How are we going to use all of this to count the million or millions? Thank you very much. Opportunities for young people. Thank you very much. I think we should give ourselves a round of applause. <laughs> Thank you very much. So we speak peace to Africa. And we say, indeed, learning is for people. Learning brings the planet to order. Learning brings prosperity. And learning brings peace. Only if we implement that which we need to implement. Thank you. <laughs>